How am I doing, Doc? Well, not too bad, Larry Joe. Actually, you're coming along just fine. Hey, don't look so glum. I know it was kind of bad luck drawing me rather than the uh, female Dr. Weber. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Very astute, Dr. Weber. She's really something. Yeah, she is. She'll be checking on you a little bit later, so the uh, day won't be a total loss. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Shoot. She said that if she hadn't found out what was wrong with me, I could have died of peritonitis. Is that true? True. And she really did save my life, didn't she? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Man, I owe her for that one. Well, I, um... I think I know a way that you can probably help pay her back. How? She's still very concerned about you, Larry Joe. She doesn't want you getting yourself into uh, stress situations where you might be aggravating your condition. This type of thing can recur, you know. You understand that, don't you? I can get another gallstone, you mean? That's right. So that when Dr. Weber was asking you all those questions, trying to find out if you were under any unusual stress, she wasn't just being nosy. She's really concerned about your welfare. So if there's anything that's uh, bothering you, it'd be in your own best interest and hers to level with her. So, uh, think about it, will you? First condition. <laughs> and also that you were looking for me. Is there any truth to that rumor? Yes, there is, absolutely. I have superb news. I talked to Audrey about the party, and she said yes. Well, that's just fine. Now that we've got the official go-ahead, we ought to start doing some planning. Mm-hmm. Do you realize that this is going to be our first joint venture? Sort of a preview of things to come. Well, then we just better do a good job of it, huh? Yeah. Listen, what would you think of the idea of inviting Laura to the party? I think she'd be really flattered. Well, by all means. She's a member of the hospital staff, and she'll know a lot of people who's going to be there. I think it'd be a very bad oversight if we didn't ask her. Oh, I hope you'd say that. <laughs> and... Would you like to come along with us when we go shopping for our dresses? Oh, come on. You wouldn't wish that on me, would you? <laughs> well, of course. After all, we will be dressing for you. Don't you know that all women in love dress for their men? Uh-huh. Well, if you're going to put it that way, I uh, can't very well refuse, can I? No. <laughs> you know something? What? I love you. I know. And I'm really glad. You know something else? What? I don't think that I've ever really been in love before. Well, it's really nice of you to say it. No, no, really. I mean it. Looking back on all of it with just uh, a little perspective, I realized that, uh, that Monica was something different. What I felt for her was something completely different. So it looks like you're it, lady. Does she really think that she can convince the court that she was acting sanely? Yeah. 
And I can't convince her otherwise. I talk till I'm blue in the face. She doesn't listen. She thinks there's one big, huge conspiracy to commit her for the rest of her life. So she thinks she will go to the court and tell them she was in command of every faculty during that period of time. Does she know what the consequences can be? No. That's what I'm afraid of. She's liable to win the battle and lose the war. And the judge could commit her to prison instead of a doctor. And if that happens, that's the last chance of curing her. The very last chance. <laughs> It'll be football season soon, and you'll forget all about it. Uh-uh, I ain't never gonna forget losing ten bucks in that game. Uh, even Heather called it better than I did. Heather? How is she, by the way? Oh, she's okay. Physically. But? Well, I, I don't understand it, but she's gone completely overboard on the subject of Monica. Overboard? Well, how? Just everything. Monica didn't want her to see the baby too soon after the surgery. And Heather took it as some kind of personal affront. She said Monica was trying to make her crawl to her for permission to see him. I didn't realize there were any hard feelings between them. Yeah. Then when Larry Joe Baker had that second attack... Well, he was in Heather's room at the time, and Monica tried to find out what happened. Heather wouldn't even give her the time of day. When I asked her about it, she hit the ceiling and went into this long diatribe against Monica. I just don't understand it. Monica's been very decent in dealing with Heather. Her acting this way just doesn't make any sense at all. Well, I'm sorry to disagree, but uh, I can see a reason. Well, pray tell. Plain, old-fashioned, garden-variety jealousy. Heather probably thinks that Monica's still a threat where you're concerned. Mm. No, she knows better than that. Since when did jealousy ever lay claim to being rational and intelligent? No, no, there's got to be something else eating at her. She really knows that it's all over between Monica and me. She ought to be happy and secure. But she's jumpy as a cat. Why? It can recur, you know. You understand that, don't you? I can get another gallstone, you mean? That's right. So that when Dr. Weber was asking you all those questions, trying to find out if you were under any unusual stress, she wasn't just being nosy. She's really concerned about your welfare. So if there's anything that's uh, bothering you, it'd be in your own best interest, and hers, to level with her. So, uh, think about it, will you? What are you doing here this time of day? Well, what else? I'm campaigning for men's lib. Somehow, I allowed myself to get roped into a um, shopping expedition with Laura and Leslie. Mm. Dresses for the party on the 25th. <laughs> uh, I don't understand it because they have both got a closet full of them. Well, it happens to be a very special occasion, you know. That it is. That it is. I, uh... I invited Mark. Oh. He didn't want to come at first. I can understand that. Well, he thought it would be painful for you. And then he finally agreed to make a token appearance for the sake of Audrey and Steve. It's actually thinking about me at a time like this, my feelings. Mm-hmm. You mean the, uh, the sanity hearing? Yeah, it's scheduled for the 22nd. No matter how it turns out, Mark's certainly not going to have anything to celebrate. seen in my life. About the dresses, um, I'm not so sure. Oh, Rick, everything that you have liked, we've hated. Well, I thought you brought me along for my expert advice. 
guess we figured you'd be easier to please. Well, I guess I better get used to being overruled. Two to one, right? Will uh, I ever be allowed to make a decision? Okay, make one now. Okay, um... You don't look enough like a bride. This isn't for my wedding. It's for a party. Oh. Okay, um... And how about if you try on one more and, uh, maybe we can reach some kind of compromise? <sighs> you think he's gonna be this difficult when you're married? Probably. And the word isn't difficult. It's impossible. Okay, all right. You two make the decision. I won't say another word. You promise. Scout's honor. Believe me, if I had known that this was gonna be decisions, decisions, I wouldn't have taken on such a heavy burden. Well, back to the drawing board. <laughs> I just don't want to do anything to hurt him. No, I know, I know, but I uh, honestly don't think you're going to have to worry about it. I don't think there's going to be a trial. Oh, you think it can be avoided? Well, of course. All the judge has to do is um, decide that she's not legally sane and uh, put her away where she'll be taken care of. So I don't think you have to uh, go through the agony of testifying against her. So, for the meantime, just um, be patient and uh, hope along with me. Okay. I don't care what Mr. Martinez says. He has to stick to the hospital diet his doctor prescribed for him. So you just go back and tell him we can't make any exceptions. I'll tell him, but he won't like it. Well, he'll be grateful when he gets better. I mean, Edge is harder than indeed. Oh. oh, nurse, make sure when you come back, every one of those files is accounted for. We don't want any more lost files around here, or misplaced ones, either. Good morning, Dory. Oh, good morning, Dr. Dante. Called and told Miss Penny they'd be ready for you in half an hour. Thank you. Well, you certainly seem to be in excellent spirits. I am always in excellent spirits. It's just that sometimes I'm in a rotten mood and the excellent spirits don't show through. <laughs> well, I don't think I can counter that kind of logic. Well, I sincerely hope not, but if my good mood is showing through, it's due to you. To me? Yes, to you. Now, let's stop this chit-chat and get back to hospital business, shall we? Yes, sir. <laughs> Not a word. But you did send them a wire yesterday. Don't worry, we'll hear something very soon. Oh, I don't like it. They want a baby so much. Why are they delaying like this? Why didn't they wire right back? Well, there could be any number of reasons. Maybe they weren't there, maybe they got involved in some sort of hospital crisis. Oh, yes, but it shouldn't take them 24 hours to settle something like that. I don't like it one bit. Edna, you're a born worry. Oh. Look, take my word for it. A baby is a very hard thing to turn down for any couple. Also, giving a baby away is very difficult. Let's keep a close eye on Heather. We can't afford to let her back down now. Now it's time for me to tell you not to worry. Not about that, anyway. She's not gonna change her mind anymore. She knows how much is at stake for all of us here. She knows. <laughs> doing up and dressed again? I'm checking out, that's what. I didn't want to do it in my robe. Lana, we went through all of this last night. I'm not going to let you go. And you're going to have to stop me physically. I told you last night, and now I'll tell you again. If I'm really the proud owner of a terminal illness, I'm not going to wait for it to happen and lie here submissively. I want to do as much living as I can while I can. And where do you think you're going to go? don't have to worry about that, my dear. 
I won't be very far away from you. 